How's it going guys and welcome to Game Evolved. I'm Shifty Cow and in today's video we're going to be talking about everything in the Battlefield 4 Spring Patch. Now before we get into it, if you do go on to enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe as we do post Battlefield content daily. So hopping right into it since we don't want to waste any time, we're going to be going over every single thing in the Battlefield 4 Spring Patch notes, so let's just hop right into it. Starting off with some stability fixes, they've updated a bunch of different things including some crashes related to audio, server crashes, and a bunch of different things including some specific fixes for PC and PS4. So personally, I haven't had Battlefield crash in a very long time, so this is probably going to be a lot more noticeable on people with lesser internet connections or people who have just been crashing in general. So hopefully they've done some good updates to that, and moving on to some general improvements. First of all, a lot of these are just bug fixes, and so the first one has to do with if you have a certain gadget equipped and you're trying to get rid of it, it'll just stay in your hands, so hopefully they fix that. They've also fixed some things of people getting stuck in the kill cams if you're receiving damage from multiple enemies, and that actually happened to me a couple of times and I had to quit, so I'm glad they addressed this. They've also better synced explosions with how they affect the terrain and kind of just model behavior, which that's really annoying when trying to record cinematics where the explosion happens and then there's just kind of a delay or a stutter. So hopefully they did fix that because that's pretty awesome. But moving on, they've actually added in some extra advanced options to toggle your parachute auto deploy, automatic peek over, and auto side lean. So that's pretty nice because it's always nice to have a ton of different options. And they've also switched it up so small vehicles can now get unstuck by melee just like boats and jet skis. So I'm assuming they're talking about dirt bikes and quad bikes, just that type of thing. Now how good would a battlefield update be if there wasn't any netcode improvement? So obviously they've made several netcode improvements including upgrading some servers and basically just experimenting with a bunch of different hertz rates and all this stuff but basically what it means is we're going to be getting some better netcode now and in the near future. Moving on, they've also reduced the passive spotting distance from 1200 meters to 100 meters. I'm not really sure what they mean by passive, but I'm assuming that it basically just translates to you're actually going to have to see the person for them to be spotted and for the little Dorito to pop up above your head. So that's always going to be nice. And they've also reduced the spotting cone angle, so that's going to be around 3 degrees. So you're actually going to have to be looking pretty closely at them. Moving back to bug fixes, they've also fixed an issue where the stairs would disappear apparently if someone was revived on them. And I've never seen this, so hopefully for the players who have experienced experience this, it shouldn't happen anymore. And they've also fixed issues where claymore kills were not being counted on recon stats. So also, if you've been playing hardcore recently and then you decide to go play the campaign, they fixed a bug where the single player campaign you wouldn't regain health after being hit. So finally went in and fixed that. And then on PC, they removed the friendly fire lock for the presets on classic mode. Now this one I'm actually pretty excited about. It says they fixed an issue where the user receives an inaccurate kill card when killed by a remote controlled vehicle. So the EOD bot, mortar, UCAV, MAV, Hopefully they fix that because every time I get killed by a UCAV, it never says it. It always says I get killed by a shotgun or an assault player and hopefully this is fixed because this was very annoying. On the PC side, they've also added in some extra settings for the CPU and GPU performance graph, and so I'm not really sure how much that's gonna change, but they've also fixed a couple of things on console where if you weren't assigned to controller one, then you couldn't do anything on the main menu and you would basically just get stuck. So that's been fixed, along with a bunch of different problems with displays of stats and dog tags, those have been hopefully fixed, and exploits on certain campaign levels and basically just a ton of different bug fixes. Now, also on squad obliteration, they fixed an issue where the bomb was forced reset and it could be redropped, resulting in multiple bombs showing up, so hopefully that's been fixed, along with they've disabled the round time extension. So instead of that, the time's actually just gonna pause if the bomb's planted and there's no time left. So moving on to some audio, they've actually added in a unique sound for headshots, and I'm really excited for this because, as most of you guys know, they've increased the damage from like 2.16 for the headshot multiplier, so basically it's going to be a two shot kill at close range. So moving on, they've also improved the bullet impact silence on soldiers, and it says that using a suppressor is going to help a lot here. And they've also fixed some random callouts that are going to be improved for your own team. So on some more specific stuff, they've also optimized the Lumpini Garden Levolution sounds, and they've also added in destruction sounds for the weather station on the buildings on Arctic, which I'm assuming their meaning is Final Stand. Moving on to some art bugs, they've also fixed some issues where some camos would not properly display in first person, and they've also fixed some bugs where things like paper and flags and sheets, those would just go crazy in the wind, so that's been toned down a bit. Moving into the user interface, they've added in 49 existing dog tags, including many favorites from Battlefield 3, so this is going to be pretty exciting to show off, and that should be pretty cool. They've also fixed an issue where if a player shoots an enemy with a vehicle weapon, the hit indicator was displayed after exiting the vehicle, and I've actually had this happen a lot, so I'm glad 
glad to see that they addressed this. Moving through some quick stuff, they've enabled network performance overlay on Xbox One, and if you want, you can actually disable this in your settings. And they've also moved the three new playlists that they added in the winter patch, like the large scale warfare. They've added that to the top of the game mode so you can select that quickly and get into a round as fast as possible. They've also fixed levels in the server browser filter, and they've fixed some of the things like it just glitching on what you're trying to find. They've also done some small stuff like improve the HUD clarity for the red dot sites based on CTE feedback, fixed some duplicate dog tag names, also tweaked and updated the help me icons, which are basically the little like uh, medic bags or the uh, ammo boxes that appear over soldiers, and they're only going to show up now if you actually need help. They also fixed a couple of bugs when you're trying to switch up how your HUD looks and kind of the customization that they added in with the winter patch, so that's been addressed. And they also increased the size of the jet's altitude, speed, and the PMS displays, so you'll actually be able to see what they're saying. They also fixed a couple other bugs, including the miscellaneous HUD transparency option is going to affect everything in your customization screen. They removed a little message that would appear on the bottom bottom left corner when you're loading into multiplayer. They removed the incorrect burst indication for the CBJ PDW because it actually doesn't support burst fire, fixed an issue where soldier camo would reset after each round, and they also added in squad obliteration in the squad join settings and fixed a couple more campaign bugs. So moving on to vehicles, this one's actually pretty cool where if you're basically a jet master, if you have the jet fighter metal dog tag and you have that equipped, or if you have the jet master dog tag, it's going to give you a special battlefield themed contrails which are basically the little jet lines that you see coming out of the engines. That's going to be pretty cool and you're also going to be able to tell at a single glance whether or not someone's going to be good in a jet. So moving on, they've also fixed an issue where if you ever exit out of a vehicle and then it shows your screen is all kind of grayed out like you've been hurt a lot but you're at full health. That happened to me a couple of times and supposedly they fixed this and they've also fixed a couple issues where the user is unable to kill an enemy that is inside a jeep or a stationary weapon with a defibrillator which hopefully that's going to be pretty fun to troll people with and they also fixed some issues where when you're trying to turn the options on on decoupling aim for the turning and the vehicle aim relative control that's not going to have any functionality before the patch but now that they fixed it it should be functional and we'll be able to use it. Moving on to the weapons, they've added in five different weapons, including the AN-94, which I absolutely love. It's an absolute beast. They've also added in the Mare's Leg, which is kind of disappointing. It's not as good as I thought it would be. The Groza 1, Groza 4, which I haven't touched too much. And the L-86, which is basically just kind of like a carbine LMG. Starting things off, they've adjusted the ADS scaling and the field of view controls to make it so that the optics don't magnify more than they're supposed to, and they've also fixed the head glitches, so basically you're going to have to get a little bit higher above cover in order to actually shoot people, because your bullets are actually going to come out of the barrel of your gun, rather than just kind of your forehead. Now we're going to try and speed through the rest of these just to get through them, but basically they've updated night vision optics, they've fixed an issue with the ACOG scope where the leftmost bar stretched into a black box, and that was pretty annoying, so hopefully they did actually adjust that. They fixed the tactical light on the MTAR-21, fixed an issue on some sniper rifles where the rangefinder used in combination with the flash hider would cause issues with the rangefinder functionality. They've also fixed some issues with the belt feeder and the autoloader not functioning on certain weapons. And they've also gone through with a full weapons balance pass and suppression mechanic update. So basically they haven't really told us everything, but if we do find it out we're going to post a video on it just so you guys get all the information. They've also, with sniper weapon tracer and impact improvements to make it visible for longer distances, that's going to be pretty nice. They fixed an issue with the M16A4 where laser sight accessories would appear when ADS with the FLIR or the IRNV. They fixed bugs with flashbangs that was preventing it from reaching intended brightness and duration. Fixed the UI for weapons and accessories to reflect correct values in the customization screen. Updated all weapon tracers to make them more clear and visible. And this is actually really noticeable if you do hop into a round of Battlefield 4 now. Tracers are a big deal. You can actually see bullets. They've added overheating messages, some to some stationary weapons that were previously missing those messages, so that way you actually know when you have to stop shooting rather than guessing. And they've also added in Gunmaster, which is a lot of fun, I had a ton of fun playing this. But anyways, that's pretty much up for the Battlefield 4 Spring Update. There were a couple things here and there on certain maps, and as soon as they do release the actual stats for all the weapons, we are going to be making an extra video on that just so we can kind of compare what they changed. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you did find it helpful, be sure to leave a like down below and share it with your friends. As always, guys, be sure to subscribe for more awesome gaming content. If you have any video ideas, be sure to let us know down in the comments below. Go check out our Twitter, guys, and until next time, stay buttery.